Yes, welcome back to Hot Topics. I'm Jeff Adjumai with Home Life Miracle and House to Trade, bringing you the most talked about real estate news going on in the GTA. Number one topic that we're gonna bring up today is the Toronto City Council approves affordable housing plan. Now this was brought to us by CTV News, and the basic idea is on Wednesday, January 30th, uh, council got together and decided that they were going to vote in favor to make 11 surplus parcels of land uh, available for affordable housing development. What that plan consists of is the creation of approximately 10,000 new affordable residential units. 3,700 of the 10,000 units are going to be used for affordable housing. These units are going to be under market value for rents in Toronto. So re average rent in Toronto is about $2,300 a month. Uh, if you're looking at 40 to 80 percent of that market value, you're looking at about 920 to 1840 in rents per month. Much more affordable than the 2300 and I think a lot of people are going to like that. The city is going to retain the land and what they plan to do is lease the land to developers for a 99 year lease term and with that the developers are going to have a lot of uh, different development fees and property taxes waived as a result over the terms of the lease. So about $176 million in development fees are going to be waived over that term with also $104 million in property taxes waived for developers that are building these new affordable housing units. There are a few city councillors that are actually trying to push for a little more red tape and a little more regulation with regards to some of these housing initiatives. And you've got guys like M Mike Layton. Mike Layton is the uh, He's the city councillor for Ward 11, that's University in Rosedale, and he wants about 50% of the units, of the 10,000 units, to be actually used for affordable housing or classified as affordable housing. I don't, I don't disagree with that, and the reason why is, like I said, whether it's 3,700 or 5,000, that doesn't solve the problem, but it at least helps to alleviate some of the pressure, and more supply coming into the market is going to help. It's not going to hurt, it's going to help. If we could have bumped that from 3,700 to 5,000 affordable units, I think that would have been a little bit more of a benefit to consumers that are looking to try and just get something affordable to rent in the city. So I don't disagree with that. I actually like that idea. Where I do disagree is where he says about one in five should be capped. If we're telling developers that we're going to cap what you can make on this unit at 40% of what market value is, that is so low, it does not offer incentive for a real estate developer who's, they're not building property just for the good of society, they're building because they see a need and they also see profit in the end. So if they don't, if they're leaving about, and they'd be leaving about $1,400 per unit on the table, if they were to go that route and, and rents were capped at 40% of market value, that offers zero incentive for developers to want to build affordable housing. So I don't agree with that idea. It doesn't make much sense economically. Um, and then you also have people like Kristen Wong Tam. She's a city councilor for Ward 13, that's the Toronto Center, and they want, and she wants to create an arm's length city agency to ensure that more units are actually kept affordable. Again, I don't know how that helps, to create another bureaucratic agency that's going to slow down the process. If the idea is to try and build more affordable housing and get more affordable housing out to consumers, it doesn't make much sense to create another bureaucratic bureaucratic agency that's going to slow down the process. The whole purpose of what I think John Tory and City Council is trying to do is to speed up development for affordable housing. That makes no sense. I don't agree with it at all. But I do agree with the, the affordable housing plan. I like it. It's a very good start. Hopefully we can actually start digging ground as of next year and just start getting rid of all as much red tape as possible so we can get more affordable housing in the city because like I said, 5,000 is not going to solve the problem, but it helps alleviate pressure in the rental market. Uh, and the second topic of the day also touches on affordable housing, but this is more so around buying property in the city. A new study shows the most and least expensive areas to buy a home near transit. So Zucasa, who is an online real estate company, they developed a study that used the Toronto Real Estate Board's 2018 sales data to pinpoint where the least and most expensive homes were within a 10 minute radius or 10 minute walk of let's say a, a subway station or the LRT station. And what they found in this study was along line one you have more of the most expensive 
uh, properties, specifically houses. The most expensive houses along Line 1 were around the York Mill Station. And these homes were going for about $3 million plus houses. $3 million. Good for them. Uh, Summer Hill was the highest when it came to condos, and co condos in those areas were about $1.2 million. Along Line 1, you have some really expensive properties. That's actually good for property owners that own in that area. Good for you. You're making money. Uh, but for people looking to buy in those areas, you're not going to find affordable housing there. It's a different different income bracket. <laughs> the most affordable condos were off of Line 3, and these were around the Kennedy Station, uh, Lawrence and Ellesmere Station, and the average price for condos in those areas were about 300, $360,000 for a condo there. So, positive numbers, and I really like the study that Zucasa did. It does help to give us an understanding of what different property types we're selling for around really important infrastructure and that's transit. Transit is huge for anyone that's looking to try and work in the city or just try and get around the city. Because if you can pick up something that's near one of these LRT stations or a subway station, you could be seeing pretty decent appreciation in the value of the property. Because like I said, the infrastructure is needed, it's valuable, and it helps add value to your property. Now, let me just take the time to do a little bit of shameless promotion on behalf of House of Trade. And what I did is we released uh, part five of our mobile age of real estate blog series. And that's where we're touching on different technological trends that are happening in real estate, not just in the GTA, just happening in general in North America. So go check that out on the House of Trade website. That's houseoftrade.ca, uh, the mobile age of real estate blog series. We have 10 parts. We released the first five already. Go check that out. You're really going to like it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment down below. Please let us know anything that you'd like us to talk about. We're really interested in doing that. Come back and join us next week. We're going to see you. Peace.